welcome and hello to everybody to the Best of Missouri Hands Workshop, Learn Canva, Roundhouse Table Discussion with James Bringer. I'm Allison Norfleet Bringer and helping out this evening is Kim Carr and Wanda Tyner. A little housekeeping. In our workshop today, we would like everyone to please stay muted. If you have any questions or issues, please use the chat feature. You will find a chat button at the bottom taskbar on your screen and make sure to get your paper and pen if you had to, for notes or if you have anything you wanna put down there. And near the end of the workshop, we will open up the floor and we'll have everybody unmute for a little Q and A. And our, our speaker for this online workshop will be Best of Missouri Hands member, James Bringer. And James, would you like to tell everybody a little bit about yourself? Sure, yeah. Well, hello everybody. And uh, thank you for, uh, to Best of Missouri Hands for having me. Um, and as you know, my boss is Allison Norfleet Bringer, uh, <laughs> my wife. <laughs> Uh, so, um, so I'm a graphic designer, web designer, and fine artist. Um, my uh, career has been a lot in graphic design, and for the last 10 years in web design, um, doing all types of graphics, anywhere from environmental graphics to making brochures, to building websites, and um, things like that. So, and also... I am a uh, teacher. I teach graphic design and web design and Photoshop Illustrator, InDesign, Dreamweaver, and whatever else that they want me to teach. I uh, teach that over at St. Louis Community College, Forest Park, and also St. Charles Community College. And um, I, I love teaching. I love graphic design. I love web design. And um, as far as my um, art, the art that I really like and gravitate towards is really um, drawing. I like drawing and I also like photography a lot. Um, Allison could probably tell you that uh, lately I've been going on this like photography binge and, and learning how to do video better, photography better, and just, you know, update my skills because one day, I would really like to get back into either photography or doing drawing or both, and maybe even part start participating myself in uh, art fairs and art events like Allison does, and like a lot of a lot of uh, you all do. So, um, but like I said, you know, I've been doing graphic design, web design, well, graphic design in particular since uh, the mid '90s. Um, and I started off learning with Photoshop, and then from Photoshop I learned Illustrator, and then I also learned what was called PageMaker back then, which is a multiple page layout program. Um, and then, uh, and then I, I I got my first my my first job was over in Livonia, Michigan. So both Allison and I are from Detroit, Michigan, and uh, so my first real job in graphic design was working for Kinko's uh, before they became Kinko's FedEx. And I started off in the branch and this is where I really learned customer service on top of making sure that I bust out the brochures, the logos, the newsletters, the everything that you could think of, especially at, um, at that time when I started there, uh, they had this policy that when a customer came in, you had to have whatever that they wanted done within 24 hours. And if you didn't have it done within 24 hours, you had to have a good excuse not to have it done. So, <laughs> and then uh, I just moved on from there, eventually moved into the uh, corporate offices where I worked at a central hub location with about 30 other graphic designers. And we uh, basically took care of clients and branches throughout all of New York, Ohio, Michigan, parts of Illinois and Indiana. Uh, and then 
long story short, we came here in 2003 and um, I started, I was doing freelancing and then started working for a graphic design firm. So now I'm currently freelancing uh, and I'm also teaching. So, so that's me. <laughs> so uh, what my goal is here today is I want to um, talk and show more about Canva and how it's a useful tool for artists. Um, and so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to share my screen. So I'm going to go through a small presentation. Then I want to do a demonstration using the desktop version of Canva. And then also I'm going to do a demonstration using the phone or smartphone version of Canva. That way you can uh, get familiar or see how, how they both work. So I'm going to go share my screen. Hey, and James, I just yep. want to jump in here for a second and, and let everybody know if you have questions, you can type them in the chat and stuff, and uh, we'll go over them at the end with James. He'll address your questions and we can unmute your mic then and and uh, you can ask him, you know, one-on-one uh, -on -one your questions and stuff. So, so if you have something while he's talking in that, don't be afraid to go ahead and type it in the chat so you don't forget and stuff. And he will cover your questions though. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Kim. Okay, so um, Canva, a useful tool for artists. So what is Canva? Well, Canva is a free, which is subscription is also available, graphic design platform that's great for making visual graphics in digital and print using templates. Canva is also a way to make visual graphics starting from a blank document or a preloaded document, which is a template. And Canva is also a way where you don't have to purchase expensive software, expensive subscriptions, crazy learning curves, and watch hundreds to thousands of hours of tutorials. With Canva, you can upload your own photos, photos and add them to Canva's templates using a drag and drop interface. And Canva is good for adding animation into your graphics to put on platforms that accept animation. So think of Instagram. And there's a lot of templates and the template categories include Zoom backgrounds, posters, presentations, flyers, cards, infographics, business cards, Instagram posts, resumes, invitations, book covers, menus, letterheads, newsletters, photo collages, tickets, bookmarks, invoices, recipe cards, and more. And I thought it was interesting that Canva includes resume templates because um, like whenever I have to make a resume or work on my resume, I always get lost on that one area. I don't know why, but it's always good that I could go to like Canva and see um, what basically other designers have done. So when it comes to these templates, the, the way these templates were built is by other graphic designers who were basically um, either freelance, de freelance graphic designers or uh, hired by Canva, and they've made these templates for people to use. So all these templates designs are done by uh, graphic designers. And Canva is run through the internet. So it is independent of computer software used on your computer. And that's why Canva can be run on your smartphone through the Canva app that you download for, from um, like if you're on iPhone, you download download the Canva app through uh, the Apple Store, and if you're on Android, um, I don't really have Android. I've always used Apple all my life, and um, so, but I I believe it was either called Google Apps or Google Play or something like that, but. 
what you have to do for the smartphone is you download the Canva app onto your phone. And because it is run through the internet, that's what makes it so powerful to be able to use. And the other thing that I like about Canva, because it's run on the internet, is let's say you make something on your desktop first. Whatever you make on your desktop um, will also basically sync to your phone version as well. So, is and what makes that really cool uh, to do is that when you make something on the desktop, and then say you want to put that graphic onto, say your Facebook or onto your Instagram or wherever, that all you have to do is just maybe wait a little bit, and eventually uh, it'll sync to your to your app on your smartphone. So you could bring up Canva on your smartphone and then whatever you made will be there. And that way uh, you can then do whatever that you need to do. So you don't have to worry about if you are on your desktop, uh, you know, how do you get it onto your phone if you want to load it up to something using your phone? So, uh, so that's what is really cool as well about Canva. So what does Canva not replace? Well, one, Canva doesn't replace graphic designers. A lot of colleagues of mine, um, whenever they hear the word Canva, they're sort of like, you know, the, the, the sky is falling type of deal. Like, you know, is Canva going to replace us as graphic designers, you know? And it's no, Canva doesn't replace graphic designers because even with graphic designers, it's ultimately about the idea that you're visually communicating. Canva doesn't replace professional graphic software. So software like Illustrator, Photoshop, and InDesign, those are always going to be out there. And Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, what well, Canva can do some of the things that Illustrator and Photoshop and InDesign do, but Illustrator and Photoshop and InDesign, they're really like a step ahead of Canva. So Canva is really still a basic program and it's not like Illustrator, Photoshop or InDesign. And Canva doesn't replace making sure you have good images, good colors, good typography and your graphics that you put out there. Make sure that you are choosing good imagery of your work, good colors in the layout and good typography is it's still up to you. Canva helps getting visual graphics up quickly, but it is still up to you to be clear and legible in your visual communication to the audience you are reaching out to. Your audience are those who want to see your work and definitely purchase your work. Come to your events, visit your websites, those whom you want uh, to get interested in your artwork and so on. Um, Canva isn't artificial intelligence. In other words, you don't have like um, a robot or artificial intelligence just whipping something up for you. The thinking behind what you put out there is still very much a human endeavor. And Canva definitely doesn't replace you. This is, Canva is another tool for you to use. Things to think about in your design and when you're designing with Canva. So one of the things that I always tell my students when you're designing, and this will be whether it's Canva or Illustrator or whatever, is that communication is very important. And really you want to answer some questions. And the questions that you wanna answer when you're designing something is you wanna answer the questions of who, what, where, when, and why. So uh, who, are you who are you communicating to and who are you? Who are you as an artist? What are you saying? What do you create? You know, be clear in your designs, make things legible and readable, and don't just trust the template. Why is what you're, why is what you are creating, why is it important? Why should people see your work? When should they see your work? 
Is it at an event that has a particular date and time? Is it right now? And where can they find your work? Is it in a variety of places such as your website, social media, art fair, art gallery, and art gallery website? So communication is very important when you're designing visual graphics. Also readability. Again, don't just trust the template design. Make sure everything is clear and legible. So for example, good contrast in colors so the typography can easily be seen on any digital screen. Uh, make sure there's a good difference between the background color or imagery and your type on top of the background color or imagery. The typography is, make sure that the typography is easily read, attractive, and understood. Not using typography that is, uh, so, well, make sure that you're not using typography that is too decorative and hard to make out because the font isn't legible. This is where Canva helps because there's already pre-made typography paired together that you could choose from. And always, 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 always use good imagery when presenting your work. Is Canva free? Well, it depends. Yes, Canva is free and the free version of Canva is truly awesome and good to use in communicating to your audience. If you want more than the free templates, free videos and free stock, phot stock photography, then you have to purchase a pro subscription. The pro subscription offers more options to choose from, but I will tell you that free is pretty good. Now you hear the expression, um, you know, if, if something is free, well, you get what you get. Well, with Canva, I've been pretty impressed with the free version. And really the pro subscription just offers a lot more things that um, like there's might, there might be more specific stock photography that uh, is inside Canva that maybe you want to use, or there are different types of animations that are available or uh, different videos. And you don't always necessarily have to have a pro subscription. So for example, let's say there is a animation or a template or something that you want to get, but you don't want to get the subscription. Um, there are times when you could just outright buy the template for maybe a dollar or buy the photo for a dollar or things like that. And, um, and also usually the, when you buy, for example, any stock, photog stock photography or, or anything in there, that you then own the copyright. Well, I don't want to say own the copyright, but you have the license now to use that photography or uh, graphic or whichever it is. So is Canva a good free option for artists to use in visual communication? Absolutely 100% yes. So um, I'm gonna get into a demonstration and I'm going to first demonstrate Canva using the desktop version. So um, here I am in my Canva account. And uh, as with anything that you want to use, you usually, especially if it's on the internet, you usually have to make an account. So um, if you haven't used Canva before, just be aware that you're going to have to make an account and usually you just use your email and then make up a password for it. And then once you make your account, then uh, you can start designing away. And so here, what you see on the screen are a bunch of available options of things that you could do. Like you can make a presentation, an Instagram post, you can make a logo. Um, but just be aware that making logos in Canva, it depends on what logo that you're making. So um, Illustrator or, well, I'll just say Illustrator sometimes can do things that Canva cannot do. So again, making a logo design in Canva, um, you could do it, 
but it's really not to make really complicated advanced logos. So I just want to say that ahead of time. And also uh, another reason why logos, um, you can make them in Canva, but just be aware that the logo that you make in Canva, because Canva is a, a, a platform that uses pixels, like Photoshop uses pixels and it's raster based, that whatever you make in Canva, it's not going to be like what you make in Illustrator where you can make what's called vector artwork. And what is vector artwork? Well, a long, to, make, to make a long story short, um, vector artwork is the ability to basically create shapes that can be scaled up or down and it's always going to retain its crispness, its clearness. So when you make something in Illustrator, and let's say you make something in a five inch by five inch area in Illustrator, and then uh, you take that logo that you make in Illustrator, and you have that logo blown up onto a four story building. Well, with vector artwork, your logo will still be just as crisp and clear. But when it comes to Canva, because Canva is a pixel based program, that scalability is going to be an issue because pixels are basically little squares that are within your document. And when you make something and you scale it up, you make it larger, those squares begin to be seen. And that is because pixels, they don't multiply, they just get bigger. Okay, so that's one thing that I really want you to be aware of. Um, Instagram story, Instagram story and Instagram posts are really good because you could definitely include animations in there. But you can also make posters, flyers, uh, infographics, business cards, blog graphics, animated social media, all types of different things. And then also whatever that you make will be included into an area called your designs. So um, that way, if you need to, you can go back to it. And then here are examples of like Instagram post templates or poster templates, Facebook posts, and things like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate how to put together uh, in the desktop version, how to put together an Instagram post. So you can either click on the social media icon right there, but I always just go to Instagram post. And when I click on that, it's going to bring me into basically a document area. And when you observe the screen, you'll see on the top part of the interface, you'll see home, file, and then where it says resize, this is for a pro subscription version. So in other words, if you want to make your graphic bigger or smaller than what you have here and you wanna do that automatically, you're not gonna be able to unless you have a uh, pro version. But that is just fine because these, these templates and these documents, they're already sized for the, um, the dimension that you need. So this white square that you see right there, this is already sized for use in an Instagram post. And then also you'll see right here where it says untitled design. This is where you can name your file or you can name your design. Um, design, there we go. Uh, I'm, I'm a very bad typer. <laughs> and uh, also you could try Canva Pro where you can get maybe like a 30, uh, 30 day free trial version. Share is a button where you would uh, like share your design to somebody over email, or you could share a link to somebody. So let's say you're making something up and you want somebody else to look at it. You could share your design to somebody else through email and they can look at it and give their input. And then download, the download button is what you would use to download your design. Now notice, uh, 
in this download drop down menu, you get file type, which it says PNG suggested. What that just means is that if you're making a still graphic, you can save your file as, say, a PNG. Or if it's available, you can save as a JPEG. Um, or if you have an animation, it'll uh, you can save your file type as basically an MP4 movie. So once you make your design, Canva really knows if you're making an uh, animation or if you're making just a still graphic, and then it'll suggest to you the best, most clearest file type that you can make. So when you post it into your social media or you send it over to a printer to be printed, um, you could be pretty rest assured it's gonna be good quality. But also see under size, um, remember when I said that you got to get the pro version in order to be able to resize this. This is what these yellow crowns right there means. That just means the pro version. So um, transparent background, that's also just available in the pro version. But that is, let's say you take a, a picture of yourself and you want to make the background transparent so you could put another color behind yourself or anything like that. The only, what you would have to do is that, for example, in Photoshop, or you can even have Canva do it, um, you can drop out the background so things can be seen um, basically behind you or whatever the subject matter is. But with the free version, it you don't have transparent anything, so you can't drop out any backgrounds. Also, uh, where it says compress file for lower quality, that's is, that what that's for is that let's say you're trying to load a design into something and it's too big. Um, a lot of times what you would have to do is compress the file to load it into say Facebook to maybe make it load in, load in faster or Facebook or Instagram is saying it's too big you can compress the file to make it a lower quality. It'll still be a good quality, but unfortunately you can't compress the file unless you get a pro version. So right now my design is empty and I'm gonna add in some elements. So um, over here, uh, right here is my actual document and the size of this document is set up at 1080 by 1080 pixels. Uh, which is a square for an Instagram post. And right over here on the left side in the sidebar, you have a whole lot of different options. So the first option that you get to right over on the very left side is templates. And templates is what you would basically use to get something quickly up. So you can look through all of these templates and see what you like. And then you would just basically tap on it and it would load up into the um, document window. And then you could just swap out the content, swap out colors, add in top typography and do lots of fun stuff. But templates is really a good quick way to get, get you up and going. Or you could even, um, if you want to, you could ultimately just have a blank screen and use these options on the side to put something together if you just want to do it all from scratch. And the other uh, things that you have available is, for example, uploads. You could upload uh, images, JPEGs, PNGs. Uh, you could upload videos and you could upload also audio if you want to include audio into your design. Um, so audio, is a lot of times something that would be used, for example, in Instagram posts or Instagram story. Um, and then you've got photos. These are photos that you can choose and use in your design. So for example, um, I'm hovering under trendy. And when I hover over any of these photos, you'll notice this free option shows up. And what that means is that you can use this photo for free. You don't have to buy this photo or you don't have to purchase a subscription to get it. 
a lot of times um, the better photos are usually located as you scroll down more and more and more. But as you see, there's a lot of free options that you can use if you choose to use any of these stock photography. Chances are you're probably going to want to use your own imagery and your own imagery of your own work. But I just wanted to show you what these options are for. And then you have uh, elements. And elements are basically graphics that you can use. And as you see, if, as I hover over some of these graphics, like featured uh, graphics, you'll see the word free pop up. So you can just uh, use these graphics for free. All you gotta do is just tap down on one and it loads it right up into the document itself. If you wanna see all the graphics that are available in the featured category, then, then all you have to do is just click on see all. But notice, for example, some of these graphics have a crown and then when you hover over them, it'll say pro. That just means that you have to purchase that graphic. So when you click on it, if you want the watermark removed, notice how Canva shows up very conveniently right there and a whole bunch of different lines. If you want those different lines removed, then you have to basically buy a subscription or if available, you buy the graphic itself. Then it'll let you um, it'll give you a version that doesn't have a watermark on it. But any of the free stuff does not have a watermark on it. So that includes the photos as well. And then you have an area for text where you can add your own personal heading or subheading or some body text where you can change the color of the text, um, the size of the text, and the, the font or the look of the text. But also you have what's called font combinations in which you could just click on one of these. Um, let's say you're trying to make a title and you see something that's interesting and you don't wanna spend a whole lot of time just looking through the different type, uh, typograph typography or typographical fonts available. You could just click on one and it'll show up right in there. And notice how even in this black bar um, that it's in, it shows up in white as in the preview, but it shows up in black right there. And then you could just do things like click on, for example, wild and um, change it to art sale or whichever that you want. You could highlight things and you could change the color to whichever that you want. You could click on new color and you could drag this little circle that you see in this window. You could drag it over there. And as you're dragging it, notice how the color on art in the document is actually changing. So there's a lot of different options that you can use. Um, and like I said, you know, using the typography that is already available that helps uh, when you're trying to come up with some good combinations. Now, most of these are free, but you will find times where, for example, it says, hello, darling, right there. Um, you click on it and it'll say, hey, you can get a 30 day free trial. And, uh, and, but you basically have to buy it. Then you have an audio area uh, where most of the audio you have to buy. And then you have a video area where she could put video into your document uh, backgrounds if you want to put a background into your document. And then also you've got a folder where when you make designs, you can actually um, put designs or put things that maybe you've bought into different folders. Now, unfortunately, with create folders, you're probably going to have to get into the um, pro version, but that's just fine. As I said, you don't have to buy the pro version to make something look good and to make good visual graphics. So I'm going to go back to templates and I'm going to click on this template right here. And 
in there, notice as I uh, in the document area, this 1080 by 1080 document area, as I hover over these different elements within this document, how this box appears. And this box is just basically telling you that this is one thing, this is one element. So when I say the word element, I'm really talking about all the, any shape, any typography, and any photography. So if I click on the photography, this square lets me know that this is an element that has been selected. And I could either resize that element or I can make it longer or smaller or whichever. And same with this typography. If you make something that has too many words in it, for example, and you need to bring down the font size, you could just grab on the corner of the box and just scale down or scale up, whichever that you prefer. Or you can grab the side of the type box and then put it in there. So, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to change some of the information that I have in here. But the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna load up some photos. So I'm gonna click on uploads and I'm just moving my browser out the way a little bit. And here's some pictures right here on my desktop, on my computer, in which I can upload into this media area. And uh, you could just upload each one, one by one, if you want to, by just dragging it from the desktop up into the upload area. Or you could click on the button and click on Upload Media and then just find your way through the pop-up windows that come up to upload your work. So I just uploaded this one piece of artwork right into there, into my media that I could use. And or I could just, now this is for Apple, but I believe this works with Windows as well, that I could just select two images at once or 10 images or however many that you want and just drag them into the um, media area. And it's just going to now upload into your uh, media area. Again, depending on your internet connection, it could be really fast or it could be really slow. Once it gets uploaded, now I'm just going to grab one of the images that I want. I want to replace one of these images that I uploaded. I want to have it replace this photo right there. All I got to do is just hover right over the image that I want, hold down with my mouse and drag into the uh, photo area. And that just automatically populates it into the area. And usually this box also indicates, so this blue box as I'm hovering over, this also a lot of times indicates the um, actual image, where the image might be getting cut off somewhere or how much image maybe that you have less uh, left. So as I scale down, notice that there's still a little bit more image left. So the sides of my image are just going right up against the edge of this, uh, this blue green box right there. So I put that image in, then I'm gonna double click right on this uh, first text right there and that highlights the text. So just like you were using a word processing program, it's the same concept. You could either just drag over the letters or you could double click and highlight all the letters. And I'm just going to put James Bringer Designer. Now notice how this text has gone to two lines. If I wanna make this text go to one line, I could either drag out from the side of my box. And the more I drag out, then it can just go into one line. Or I could just, with this box selected, I could find the uh, font specification. So the name of this font is Libre Baskerville. And this is the size of the font. This is the color and the weights and italics and everything. So I could just either 
just highlight this 38.2 that I have in there currently and click on 24 and hit the tab key and that automatically changes the size of the text or I could click on the uh, the number that's in there and it brings a drop down menu or I could use the plus or minus signs right there. I could also again change the color if I want. Now the cool thing that I like about Canva is that when I put that photo into my Canva document area, it also took some of the colors from the photo and put it right in there. So that way, this can help you with your color scheme, um, especially if maybe you're trying to brand something. So brand branding always involves basically the way that you look to to an audience. So it involves colors, it involves logo design, and all types of things. But right here with these photo colors, because you put your photography or your the artwork in there, it grabbed colors that you could use if you would like. So for this James Bringer designer, if I want to make that this color orange a little bit more there, and maybe there I'll make it a little bit more orange. As you see, if I just click on the element, I could change the color to however that I want, or I could go back to the original document colors if I choose to. So I'm gonna put in my art event. I'm gonna drag the size out a little bit right there. I'm gonna double click right there to highlight all of that text. And I wanna say the STLCC art gallery, forest park. And make sure I change the A. And then I'm just going to quickly change the size of this. Maybe make it a little bit bigger. Have it stand out a little bit more. And then also, it, well, as you see, you're able to just take the content and click on it, highlight it, change colors, change fonts, change anything. But what if you need to move the content? Well, you can do that too. So for example, if I wanna bring James Bringer Designer down a little bit more, I could click on the element and then I could grab like the top side or I could find if that doesn't work, like it's not doing for me. <laughs> Notice right here. There is, there's that symbol right there. That just means move. You can move any direction. So I'm just gonna move that down to about right there. And if I want this element to move down a little bit more, I could do that. And then I could also say www.stlcc.edu for if the person wants more information. Also, uh, if I wanna change the color of say this background that I have right there, I'm going to click on the background and I wanna show you what I did again. I'm gonna click on the background and then I'm looking right up into this area right here and notice you've got color, crop, flip. These are things that you could do. If you wanna change the color, all you have to do is just click on the color thumbnail that you see right there and then change the color to whatever you think looks best. So maybe something like that looks good. And then I wanna change this back to a yellow. I wanna change this back to a yellow. And I'll even make this a yellow. Maybe make this a little bit more contrast. Um, so I'm always making sure that my text is clear. So here's a graphic that I like. And let's say this is a graphic that you're creating and that you like. When you click on this outer area, this gray area right here, 
if the option is available, you could animate things. You can animate elements within your design. And it gives you some automatic animation that you can apply to this. So for example, I'll click on animate. And here it gives me some page animations. Right now it's not animating anything, so it gives none. But if I click on block, this is how the graphic will animate when I bring the graphic into, for example, Instagram. And then when somebody looks at this post, when the post loads into their phone, it's going to animate just like that, or breathe, or fade, or whichever that you choose. Now, again, you'll see some crowns on certain things. That just means that it's the pro version. But I want to click on block, and that's the way that I want it to load. And then following my cursor, if you go right up here, right to right where download is, and right to the left of it, this button right here, if you animate something, you could also change the amount of time that this graphic sh is showing to somebody. So this isn't to change the amount of time that your graphic loads in. In other words, if anything's moving, but how long this graphic is going to stay up into somebody's post. So for example, after this graphic loads in just like that, it's going to stay up for five seconds um, into an Instagram story or something like that. If you just click right on there, um, this will uh, let you see how it's going to look as a movie and also if you want to change the time so i'm no longer at this button but i'm going right over to here notice it's giving me now the name of the animation and if i want to click the editing time or the time that it's up into somebody's post i could just drag it along right there to make sure that somebody maybe sees it for at least 10 seconds. Um, it just depends on who's looking at it and things like that. Then if you wanna download this and it's an animation, you just click on download. It gives the file type and the most suggested thing that you could uh, use. Just click on to download. And then this is going to basically prepare your design. And then I wanna download this onto my desktop. Now, the cool thing is, and I know I mentioned it before, is that even if you make this into your desktop, if you have the phone version, it will sync to your account onto your phone. So if you prepare it in your, um, in your desktop, you could then download a version for you to keep or to use on your desktop computer, but also you can go to your uh, phone and load up to Facebook or Instagram or whichever um, what you made. So also here is name your design. That's what I named the file. And then I'll just click on save. So there is the desktop version. I'll go back to home. And it usually automatically saves your design. So automatically my design is right there. And currently this design should now be syncing to my phone. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to transfer to my phone. Give me one second. Or two seconds or three seconds. And I'm just waiting for everything to sync up. And there we go. So here is my phone. And um, you won't be able to see any thumbnails or clicks or anything like that. But in, on my phone screen, I've got my Canva app that's synced up to my Canva account. When I click on it, um, here's all of my designs that I've done previously already. Now. I noticed that the most recent design that I made did not load up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go out of Canva. If you know how to do this on Android or Apple, um, I suggest you do it, but I'm on Apple. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move up like that and swipe that and anything else that maybe I have available. Because what I'm doing is I'm um, clearing out what's called the cache on my phone. And then I'm going to go back to Canva and it's going to resync. And if it asks me any questions, I'm going to be like no or whichever. And then uh, I go under designs and now you'll see on the upper left, there is the most recent design that I made, which I could download into my uh, media on my phone as well. So I'm gonna go to home. I'm gonna click on Instagram story. Well, am I gonna do that? No, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna do something else. I'm gonna go back to home. I'm sorry, I'm gonna go to designs and course it's not doing what I want it to do. Well, okay. <laughs> Just bear with me one second. So of course I had a design all prepared and ready to go and it's not showing me the template that I want to use. Ah, there it is. So I'm loading up this one right here. And so what I so the concept is still the same whether it's desktop or whether it is the phone. If you want to change the information, all you have to do is just tap down on what you want to change. So for example, you've got a uh, art workshop right here, intro to sketching. I just tapped right on the element. Then I tapped on it again. And I could say um, my art event. Then I can say done. Now, if I want to put another line of text in there um, and then maybe move that my art event up, I could just hold with my thumb, drag up just like that. And then if I want to add some more text in, you'll see a circle black, a semi black uh, transparent circle with a plus sign at the lower right corner. I'm just going to click on that. And that brings up some options that I could use in which I could click on text and I could say add a uh, some body copy right there and then do like I did before where I just tap right on the text itself. I could say James Bringer. Designer click on done. If I want to change the size of the text, uh, I'm going to make sure to select the text and then right at the bottom, right at the bottom of my phone, you'll see like a trash can, then you'll see edit and open sans. And you take your thumb and you just, just swipe either to the left or to the right. And you could change the point size if you want by just dragging to the left or the right on that little bar that you see for font size. Um, and it's a little hard to see maybe on your screen, but there's a circle that you could put your thumb onto and change it just like that. Also, some of these elements, when you click on them, notice, for example, uh, the 7th of March, Tuesday at 12 p.m., 3 p.m., the line under it, and then it's got 8th March you'll see boxes all together right there. What that means is that this particular item is grouped. And the way to ungroup what you have right there is you need to find on the bottom by swiping, you need to find ungroup. So I'm gonna click on ungroup and what that's gonna do is when I click off and then click back on, it separates these elements. So if there's something that maybe I want to get rid of, I can just click on the element, 
once I've got it selected, I can hit the trash can that's at the bottom. Some of these elements are a little bit hard to click on. And uh, so you might have to pinch a little bit. There we go. And go in a little bit closer then pinch out. Then you can change your information. So let's say that uh, my art event is going to be June 4th to July 4th, 2021. If I want to make this bigger or bolder or anything, I just got to make sure that I've selected it. It's also giving me the name of the, my font that's on the bottom. And I could just swipe on the bottom. I could click on bold. If again, I want to change the uh, font size, I could do that as well. And then if there's any other information that you want to put in here, so maybe I'll put in S, S T L C C art gallery. I'll hit return again, give the address. Oakland Avenue. Now, the thing is, is notice how all of that text is all bold right now. If I want to have any text, like maybe if I wanted to have July 4th to July, June 4th to July 4th, 2021, if I wanted that bold, and then STLCC Art Gallery, uh, not bold, I would have to make two separate text boxes. And that's how that would solve that problem. Also with these uh, text boxes, you could change the alignment. So here's my alignment right there in the middle. Those lines right there, I'm changing it to a center line, a right align, le uh, full align, back to left align. So really I'm just trying to show you how you can use these elements to change things. Also, if you don't like a particular picture and you don't maybe want to use it, you can just tap on the element, hit the trash can. Then if you want to add in your own artwork, you can click on that plus sign in that black circle. You click on it, you can find tap on elements, and then find called frames. Choose a frame that you want. So here's a circular frame. I could drag this frame right over to here. And then if I want to add any photo or any artwork inside of this frame that I put in. So remember, I'm calling it a frame, not a shape, but a frame. I'm going to hit on replace right at the bottom. And this is going to bring up my uploads, which I could then click on the upload. And there I have my artwork in there. Now, when it comes to especially to the phone version, if you want to move what you have inside of the frame a little bit, you got to make sure you like double tap, but you're really limited in what you could do. So you're limited in your scaling. You can't really scale it down too much inside of the frame, but you can move it maybe up and down or back and forth. When you get it the way that you want it, you just hit that check mark right at the bottom. And uh, also anything, any other element that maybe you want to change. So uh, I want to change that background really quick. So I just tap right on the background. I'm finding the color of that background and it's on the left side of replace. It's in that little box. I'm going to tap right on the color and I'm going to use this color right there. When I uh, get it the way that I want, I just tap right on the side and I'm finished. If I want to animate this, then I'm going to find it at the bottom. I'll click on animate and I can find my pre-animate um, preloaders right there. So I did black on the desktop. I'll do black again, just like that. 
And also, if you want to change the time that this is showing up in somebody's Instagram story feed, you can just click where it says 5.0s. You click on there and drag that bar to the right to about 10 seconds, and then click on done. And then um, if you want to, you can tap on the play button just to see how that's going to play. If you like the way that it looks, right to the right of the play button, um, there is basically your upload or share symbol. You just tap right on that. You could download the video or you could share it to a Facebook story or things like that. Um, what I usually do, you can even share it to your Instagram account. But what I usually do is I'll just click on save as, I'm gonna save it onto my phone because I maybe wanna use this over again. So I'll save as, click on download and it'll say preparing your design. Then it's just going to come up to where you want to save it. I want to say save video. And then, yay, you saved your design. So I'm going to go to photos. And there it is in my photos. And that's how I have it. And that is how you do it. So I'm going to get out of this uh, phone version. And if there's any questions or anything that you would like me to answer. Yeah, James, that was great. I appreciate it because I've been using Canva for about a week or two and uh, I learned some things here. So I appreciate it. And I know we had some questions. I got kicked out and so I lost the chat. I know Nina had a question. If you want to unmute yourself, Nina, and ask your question. Hi, Nina. Sure. Hi. You need to unmute yourself. I there did. You um, I actually had a couple more questions, but since Kim said I could ask them, I just wrote them down. Okay. Um, the first one was, I, I've been sort of arguing with other people about um, legibility of emails, new, newsletter type emails. Um, and I find that there's really a big difference when you're looking at something on your phone versus when you're looking at it on a desktop. So I, I, I use MailChimp for that. And it has an option for um, sort of, I guess, I forget what they call it, but like, you know, maximizing for, um, for phones, but should you actually design everything that you're doing nowadays for the phone? Because it seems like more and more people are looking at stuff on their phones. Um, actually, when you're designing, you really have to think of both two different versions, basically, a phone version and a desktop version. The reason why I say that um, is because you, not everybody uh, is gonna use their phone. Some people are just, you know, set to see things on desktop and that's all that they really want to use to uh, see anything that comes in. So when you're designing, what I more suggest is that you have uh, basically two different versions, one, as a desktop version that is going to be seen on larger screens, on monitors, and then you have the phone version. And of course, with the desk version, it gives you a little bit more flexibility that you could have some check text, uh, more lightweight, maybe not as big, and things like that, depending on what the design is. But whenever, and, and you're correct as far as legibility with phone, whenever you're designing something for a phone, you always got to make sure that you have the text at a really good, clear size. And that's why I always even download everything onto my phone first and check it out and uh, bring it up onto my phone. And the other thing that I like to do is uh, if I have a colleague around me um, or I have somebody who's really going to give me an honest opinion, I ask their opinion. I just have them look at my design and I just say, have at it, tell me what you think. And if they have trouble reading it or they don't know what it's for or what it's about, 
then I know I have to start rethinking my design. So. Well, I almost wonder if there is sort of an age difference because what I, what the person that I'm sort of having difficulty with right now is a young person who is <laughs> designing things that I can't read because they're too small. Right. And so I do everything for old people like me where it's much easier. I, I use less type, bigger type, easier to read fonts, more contrast. And I just, I cannot seem to get her to sort of understand that, that there, you know, that that's what, what I feel like everybody should do. Right. Yeah. Uh, I, I definitely feel you on that one. And working with younger students, it's, that's always going to be a dilemma. Um, but I say for you, yes, design bigger, bolder, um, as long as, you know, the design looks good and making sure that the colors that are, you're using have a good contrast to everything where it's just really legible. So I would say for you, definitely design for, as you would say, an older <laughs> audience. Um, and don't worry about the, I don't, I don't want to say don't worry about the younger audience, but don't really mind sometimes what they say because um, if your design looks good, your design looks good. And that's going to look good towards an older or younger audience, per period. But I would always design to make sure that everybody can see it, whether older or younger. So, um, so to answer your question, go for the older. <laughs> I can't hear. I know you. Melanie also oh. had a. Uh, I know Melanie also had a question too, but I lost it. So Melanie, if you can unmute yourself and uh, ask James your question. Sure. Can you hear me? Okay. Yep, I can hear you. So I I've used Canva for a while, off and on, and I was wondering if you had some established brand colors. Is there a way to save that in the color palette? For you to use again if you have the free version unfortunately if you have the free version you can't okay. save brand so the pro version you can make up a brand kit and so you can make up colors and save them under your brand kit you could also make certain fonts that you're going to use with certain boldnesses certain weights certain everything but unfortunately it's all only found in the pro version. So, sorry. <laughs> does, does anyone else have some questions for James? Molly if has so, unmute yourself and next. Yeah, I noticed when um, you're creating the design on the desktop that um, there is an option to add design. So is there a way to make multiple designs and then string them together for a longer video? Yes, uh, that's a good question. What you could do is you could add pages. Um, the reason why I didn't show adding pages is because I did. It, it could go on forever. Um, so when you add pages, so for example, like when you are making an Instagram story and let's say you make uh, three pages, um, those three pages that you make, let's say they're five seconds per page, you could then load up is basically like one Instagram story that is going to have the first page stay for five seconds, the second page stay for five seconds, and the third page stay, stay for five seconds. Also, when you're designing, I always suggest that maybe uh, you could design ahead too. So if you know some events that maybe are coming up uh, just to get ahead of the game you could add pages to your uh, Instagram post document and just sort of like make other designs that are going to go according to other events but yes definitely adding pages I hope they answered your question yeah definitely okay cool and Nina I Molly shared that you can preview your MailChimp campaigns on a phone before you go live so you can yeah, see. Yeah, I do that. 
it's just it's a it, it's a difference of opinion and i thought that when james talked about i mean who who you're trying to reach and for the particular person that i i'm doing this with we are trying to reach an older audience and i think the problem is that she sees everything with her 29 year old eyes and <laughs> i see them with my old eyes and it's you know it's hard to help somebody see something that they can't physically see until they get older yeah <laughs> i can't wait that long <laughs> Wanda, I was curious, did you um, still have a question as well? No, no, okay. right after I typed it, James answered. Okay. I, I have more questions, but I was waiting to give everybody else a turn. Everybody got theirs out? Um, if you're, James, if you're creating one of these kinds of things that basically somebody else is going to post, um, are they big files? Are they are are they emailable? Do you know, like if you do an animation, a multi-page animation, can you download it and email it to somebody, or is that going to be problematic? Um, it it depends. So if you do a multi-page animation, of course, animations, anything video is always going to take up more memory. So my experience with um, Gmail is. Gmail will accept up to a 25 megabyte attachment. So um, you could email that to somebody else, usually with no problem. Although if you're sending it through the mail app uh, using Apple, I think that's only a 20, 20 megabyte. So what I usually do is that, um, and, and that's another reason why I download something onto my computer is that I could click on the file and find out how big that file is. And let's say that file is 50 megabytes. Well, I automatically know that it's going to have a heck of a problem going up into anything uh, like Instagram or whichever, but it also depends on you know, what you're doing, uh, what you're making it for. But if you want to say, send that to somebody else, I use what's called wetransfer.com. And what that'll do is that um, you're able to upload your file into temporary storage, which will make a link and send that link to the person that you're sending that file to for that person to then download your image. It, or, it sounds like, um, like Google, whatever that is, Google something or Dropbox. It's 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 similar to Google Drive. Now, That's Dropbox, what, yeah. you could put that Dropbox. You could basically load that up into a folder and share your folder for somebody to go into. So it's a little different. But okay. even with Google Drive, you could load up your file into Google Drive. You could share that folder to somebody else, and so somebody has access to that folder and then they can download your file from there. And so, and that helps a lot. As a matter of fact, I had a client, uh, which I had like a hundred megabyte file and I uploaded it into my Google Drive into a folder. And then I shared that folder with my client. And then my client was able to then go into their computer, go into, uh, well, I'm sorry, yeah, go into their email and basically have access to that folder to then download whatever I gave them. So I hope that answered your question. Yeah, I, th I think, yeah. Um, also, I've been using Adobe Spark, um, which seems like it's a lot like Canva. I haven't tried Canva yet, so are you familiar with Adobe Spark? I'm just wondering, I mean, it, it, it looked like the screens were very similar. It looked like the kinds of things you could do were similar. And I'm just wondering if there's an advantage um, uh, to Canva. I, I haven't really used Adobe Spark. Um, so I don't have enough knowledge to, to tell you that. Okay. Um, but I, I think 
if I'm not mistaken, you have to have, and you might be able to tell me if I'm wrong about this, but I think you have to have an Adobe Creative Cloud subscription to- No, I don't have one. Oh, they really? have a free they have a free version too. It's pretty limited, but and they actually put a watermark at the end of your things. Oh, so man. it says, you know, create created by Adobe Spark or something, uh, which I, I don't care. It's on the it's on the at the very <laughs> end um, if you're doing an animation. So it I don't know, it doesn't bother me. But Canva doesn't put any kind of watermark even on the free version. Not not that I know of. Unless okay. you use something that you specifically have to buy. Okay, so that seems like that would be an advantage then already to not have that. Okay, yeah. I have just one one other thing, and that is, um, is the Canva presentation thing is that similar to PowerPoint? Um, the present it's similar in a lot of ways. Uh, you could add video. This. Um, oh, I haven't okay. really used Canva presentation too much, but from my understanding, you could add animation there as well. So it's really similar, but it does have its differences. But I, I guarantee if you know PowerPoint or are familiar with PowerPoint, then uh, presentation will, will be familiar. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else have questions, James? You did a great job, James. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Allison did have a question. On whether uh, we did have, yeah. Go ahead, Kim. Uh, that, no, that's why I was going to say, Allison did ask, uh, is the wetransfer.com, is that free? Or is that um, a service you have to pay for? It's free, uh, up to two gigabytes. So basically, if you have a file that is 1.5 gigabytes big, you could transfer it to somebody else for free. Anything over two gigabytes, then you got to pay. Okay. No, I, I, I started using uh, Canva. I, I haven't used it much, but I, I really do like it. It, it. And it does seem to be very uh, user-friendly. It, it seems like... Uh, you know, it's easy to kind of figure out how to do things. You still got to get in there and play with it and stuff like that. But uh, um, I do like the different options of things you can do. And uh, um, so I've been trying to use that a little bit with my Instagram post and stuff. And that was a good thing you showed about the video where you can uh, increase the length of time because I didn't know that. And I posted a video um, to Instagram and so it didn't show up unless people clicked on it. So it was like a blank screen. So I'm glad you explained that because I'm going to try it again now. And hopefully it won't be a blank screen that they see. Yeah. And also when it comes to video, um, just like I added in the, the photo of the artwork into the frame area, you can go into the video section and you can take any of that stock video or if you even make your own. And you could do the same thing. You could put the video into that um, stock photography, uh, oh, I'm sorry, into that frame section. Mm -hmm. And the way that Canva has it set up is that uh -huh. when you download something, it automatically compresses your video files to have the optimal format where it's not gonna to be too big and should be able to load up pretty easily. Yeah. It's a nice program. <laughs> it's a nice program. I appreciate you taking time to, to go over everything with us. And uh, so if, if folks have questions after this, they can um, pop something in on the Best Misery Hands page and ask you, or they can yeah, direct uh, message you, or how would you like for them to contact you? Uh, you could uh, contact me if you go on to my uh, Facebook business page, jbringergraphics.com. I've got a sign up that you could sign up to my email community. Um, also, uh, my direct contact is james at jbringergraphics.com, which you can find that on my business page as well. Um, and for the sign up to my email community, that's where I'm going to be sending information on um, 
things that I'll be doing, uh, upcoming courses that I'll be making and that will be available and, and what I'm up to and things like that. So. Excellent. Excellent. Cool. And, well, and so James, you also offer your services. Um, like if someone, uh, um, wanted to pay you for like an hour of your time or something to, um, walk them through something in more detail. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. You're available to do things like that. Okay. Yep, I'm available Excellent. to do one-on-one, -on -one, uh, one-on-one -on -one workshops, training, things like that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, fantastic. And and everybody, we do have James again uh, next month on the uh, 15th at 7 o'clock p.m. He will be uh, going over uh, how to create videos because uh, we all know that videos are the hot, a hot thing on uh, social media and stuff like that. So, so he'll be uh, sharing some of his insight with us to help us do a better job with that. So, we appreciate yeah. it. And I'll, I'll so be doing everybody that. good. Yeah, I'll, I'll be doing that one on iMovie uh, because I work on the Apple operating system. So, that's the free video uh, editing app. Okay. But what you do in iMovie, the principles are still the same whether it's on Windows. All right. Well, I'll, I'll be uh, very anxious to see that one too, James, because I've had an iPhone now for years and I've been too afraid to touch the iMovie. Um, so <laughs> this will help get me over my fear, hopefully. So I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> cool. Cool. Okay. Right. Well, thank you so much, James. We appreciate you. Thank you for having me. Thank you everybody for joining us thank tonight. You. Yeah. We'll see you on the members only page. And uh, have a good evening. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, James. You did a good job, James. Thank you. Thank you. Sometimes I have a tendency to get long winded, so.